Omega, this is Erica from Ever Educating, and this channel is teaching tips, tools, ideas, and resources for new college instructors. And this month is a special month where I'm doing a theme per week. So last week was college basics, this week is writing. So today's video, I'll go over five websites to use if you're teaching writing skills to your students. And then on Friday, we'll have three activity ideas that you can assign in your classroom related to writing. If you want the assignment sheet templates, those are in the course that I've linked below, and you can find more information about the series there as well. So the first website that I highly recommend is Purdue Owl. And so Purdue Owl is a way to help your students with their citations in your course. So they can learn MLA, APA, Chicago, etc. in your course by using this particular website because it has guides for all these different citation styles and it stays up to date. So I recommend actually having a little short guide that you create yourself of the types of sources that you'll have a lot in your class. So the academic journal article, the book, the book chapter, those kind of things, website, right? But you can also just say, hey, here's a link in the LMS to Purdue Owl and the MLA guide or the APA guide or the Chicago guide. And this is really key when you are teaching students how to cite work in the research papers or whatever it is that you are assigning them. There, of course, are other websites, some that are attached to libraries, right, or even generators of citations. But I think Purdue Owl was a great one to go to for teaching citations to your students. And I do have a video about teaching MLA citations that I'll link below as well. Here's the Purdue Owl website, and there's definitely plenty of resources that you can use. It's not just for citation style guides, but I do feel that the guides are the best part of Purdue Owl. Uh, because it has such great organization of the different types of citations that the student might be using, as well as sample papers, you know, and stuff like that, where they can see, you know, how a paper heading is created and the header, the actual structure of the paper itself, and all of that. So I do find that this site is great for citations, but of course it does have other uses as well. The next website to really check out with your students is the library website. So the library attached to your particular university or college. So yes, as I said, you can find information about citations, but also they usually have like, what is plagiarism, how to not plagiarize, and you know, maybe they have these subject guides for the courses you're teaching. Here are some resources of teaching literature or research of teaching chemistry. I know that was in my old school, so it might be in yours as well but really just kind of going through the library website and picking out, hey, here are certain pages my students should already know about and introducing your students to them. Here is how you access the databases, right? Here's how you filter uh, sources from your databases to be helpful for this particular class, okay? So really, library databases, library website in general, is really key and you can find certain pages that directly relate to teaching writing skills for the college level. So obviously actually writing, but also citations, plagiarism, and doing research. Here's a quick look at the Milner Library website. So this is the one from ISU where I got my PhD. And as you can see, obviously it depends on your institution, but in this one, you have the catalog for articles or books in the physical library and then the databases are right after that. But you wanna really explore and like, for example, in this one, if you go down, you end up seeing the subject guides of different courses being taught, but also citation help and managers and so on and so forth. So just kind of looking through and seeing what sources are on your Milner website or your library website that can be useful for teaching writing. I also recommend the Writer's Web website, which is a website created by the Writing Center of the University of Richmond. Because it has a lot of links to help students with brainstorming ideas, outlining their work, and that kind of stuff. Just like the pre-writing elements of writing, as well as the regular, like, actually writing paragraphs, you know, writing your research, creating a good structure. It's just a good writing center website that I think could have some great resources for you to use. So you have to create all of them yourself. Here's a quick look at the writer's web. So as you can see, you have these different elements of writing that you can help your students with. So if you go to first drafts here, you can see what resources they have for that. Okay, so writing analytic research papers, across glossary literary terms, looking to write strong conclusions or paragraphs. So all this you can kind of just go through and have your students use it to help strengthen their writing. In a similar vein, there's also OER, so Open Educational Resources, that you can find online. I have video about that as well that I'll link below. But basically here, you can just find free textbooks that are about writing, right, academic writing. 
and you can just assign the textbook itself or maybe certain chapters of it to your students to help them with their writing skills. And again, if you know last week you teach them how to annotate their readings well, then they can really use these to improve their own writing. And so this is just one option that I'll link, you know, I'll show here on the screen and I'll link it below. But there are plenty of textbooks about writing that you can find completely free on the internet if you use OER to do so. Here's just one OER website that I recommend, so OER Commons. And all I did here was search for writing for the college level. And as you can see, 408 results. And you can just go through here and look at potential books or PDFs that might help with your teaching. So teaching developmental writing, business writing, professional public writing, and so on. You can really go through here and figure out which ones might you wanna use in part or whole when you're teaching your writing course. So let's say we go to college writing here. You can find information of what's available and what license is being used, the language that it's in, and then you can go ahead and view the source. And so you can figure out which part of the book do you wanna use or do you wanna use the whole thing? So tons of these in OER, especially when it comes to teaching college writing. And this one's kind of strange. It's called the Academic Phrase Bank. And it's basically a website that helps you with, or help your students use words that are a bit more specific jargon, right? A bit more high level than what they might be using in the past in high school. And it kind of relates to different types of writing that you're doing. So if you're describing methods, if you're doing compare and contrast, if you're defining something, it basically gives students, hey, try these phrases, try these words to make your papers sound more academic in nature. Now, of course, they don't want to go too far into this, and then it sounds like impossible to understand. That's not the point of academic writing. But I do think that you know having students learn, hey, there's some ways of making your writing very clearly being about, hey, I have knowledge of the jargon in my type of writing discourse community. Here's proof, right? But where do they learn that? One way can be using a website like the Phrase Bank. So this might be for like your more advanced classes, maybe you have seniors, right, rather than college freshmen, but just something I thought would be helpful, maybe for you, right, it might be helpful if you're a grad student, and so I wanted to add it in here as well. So here's the academic phrase bank, and so as you can see, different types of language, right, what, depending on what you're doing in your paper, so perhaps compare and contrast, and then you can go here, well, what is it they're doing in the comparing and contrasting? So maybe it's introducing similarities, so you click that, and now you have examples of how you can phrase that in your writing. So again, maybe a bit more advanced, but it can definitely be used when teaching writing or when doing your own writing for academic uh, research. So these are just a few websites, right? And again, in the OER case, there are tons that you can go to to find resources for teaching academic writing. Uh, but if you have your own suggestions, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. And if you have any questions about these five, you can let me know in the comments as well.